morning. My name is Claire Sunderman. I am a student leadership assistant for the Marvin Center for Student Leadership. And then Josh, if you want to introduce yourself. I know we have introductions in a bit. But. Hello, everyone. My name is Josh Auten, um, and I'm super excited to, uh, I'm a student leadership assistant as well, and we are super excited that you joined us today for Leadership Theory and the BGSU Leadership Achievement Award session. So uh, Claire's going to start us off with our agenda for today. Yeah, so we're just going to do some quick introductions of um, who Josh and I are, what our job is, and then the Marvin Center. You probably have already heard a little bit about that today. Um, expectations, there probably shouldn't be many because, I mean, other thing, we can't really see your faces. So, yeah, and then we're going to define leadership, um, talk about the social change model. That's going to be the majority of what we talk about today. And then the BGSU Leadership Achievement Award. So. So some introductions. Again, my name is Claire Sunderman. I use she, her, hers pronouns. Um, and then I'll be your student leadership assistants for the Marvin Center for Student Leadership. I mean, you've probably heard about it a little bit today, but um, what we do is we go to different organizations and host consultations about different topics in leadership. So today we're talking about the social change model. We also do things about inclusivity, diversity, other things like that. Josh, do you wanna? Introduce yourself again. <laughs> so my name is Josh Auten. Um, I use he, him, his pronouns. I'm a second year student studying finance and accounting. Um, and kind of going off of what uh, Claire was talking about, we're student leadership assistants, um, which is a paraprofessional role um, in the Marvin Center for Student Leadership, um, where we are a team that's super passionate about social change and leadership. Um, so we do a variety of educational programs um, like this one today, um, where we talk about lead different aspects of leadership, where we talk about um, social change. Um, we also have certificate programs as well as um, a lot of different other cool things that we do um, in this role. And I'm actually going to like plug a little um, real quickly that our applications um, to be a student leadership assistant for next year have just opened up this past Monday. Um, and you can find those applications at bgsu.edu forward slash um, SLA. Um, so if you are a, um, if you're gonna be a uh, sophomore, junior or senior next year and you're really passionate about social change and leadership, um, we encourage you to apply, so yeah. Awesome. So uh, I know we can't exactly see your faces or get uh, you know too much voice interaction, but um, I'm just going to have you guys drop some ideas in the chat. So when I say the word leadership, what do you think of? And you can go ahead and put this in the chat or the Q&A, whichever works best for you. So Hunter said, I think of leadership through connections as a group. Um, leadership is the community and how everyone is intertwined to achieve a common goal. Um, so yeah, a really great, um, really great idea there. And I think you're totally right and hit it right on the nail. Um, does anybody else want to share um, what, um, what they think of when they hear leadership? Um, we had someone who helps other people achieve their goals. That's definitely right. But, um, I think that's exactly what a leader is. Um, maybe just one more, if anybody wants to share. And we have leadership is when someone who actively listens to their followers and directs them um, through a situation based on their needs. So I right there, Connor, um, I think that's really goes hand in hand uh, talking about servant leadership um, and, you know, going based off of the needs of those that you're serving. Um, so really great ideas there. Thank you so much for participating. Um, so Claire. Claire's going to talk to us a little bit about the definition of leadership and what leadership means. Yeah, 
So here at the Marvin Center, we believe that leaders are made, not born. Um, so you can learn to be a leader. You're not, you know, people aren't naturally just leaders. Um, so uh, we believe leaders are made. You can learn skills and develop into whoever you want to become. Um, so leadership is a process that involves collaborative relationships that lead to collective action grounded in shared values of people who work together to affect positive change. And so that's what the um, definition of leadership from Leadership for a Better World, I believe that's a book. So, yes. So, Great, Josh, you wanna, yeah. yeah, so next we're gonna talk about the social change model. Um, so the social change model um, is something that's really cool. It's, um, and I wanna kind of, before we dive into this, I kind of want you to think um, before, because before I even heard about the social change model and like what it is, um, I first thought of it and I was like, okay, this is interesting. Like what is a social change model? So um, I'd like everybody to kind of think for a couple minutes, we'll give you about um, three minutes to kind of think about um, when I say social change model, what do you think that is? And what do you think, um, you know, what do you think that could be? Feel free to drop any of your ideas in the chat if you feel so. As we're kind of wrapping up those ideas, I'm actually going to ask Claire when, um, what do you first think of when you hear social change model? Well, before I knew what it was, I would probably say um, something along the lines of um, a model, a model for social change that that's very, very generic. Um, but a more so like a map of how social change is made, I would say. Um, that's definitely um, one of the things I would have thought before I learned about this. Um, so talking about the social change, kind of defining it for a second, social change is working to make a positive difference for the common good in ways that are collaborative and that address the root cause of the problems. Um, so the social change model is built um, on the idea that leadership is a process um, in order to create and make social change. Um, and so when we talk about social change, we're th talking about, you know, how is a, how can we make a positive difference as a leader? Um, and that's why it's super important that, um, you know, when we're um, going, we're talking about servant leadership, especially, um, it's always important to keep this social change model um, in mind um, because it really can, it really affects how we leave a positive impact on um, those around us. Um, so Claire's going to start with talking about, um, you know, the individual values and sort of the components to the social change model. Yeah, so there's a couple different components to the social change model. And the first um, of these components is individual values. So this component is made up of consciousness of self, congruence, and commitment. Um, so I'm just gonna have you um, think about these as I go along and how um, you in your daily lives, um, how you um, express consciousness of self, congruence, and commitment. So consciousness of self is an awareness of personal beliefs, values, attitudes, and emotions. So it's, um, you know, being aware of um, your emotions, being aware of um, yourself in a certain space, um, being mindful of the things you do. Um, this could also be your uh, MBTI, um, the uh, personality kind of quiz sort of thing. Um, and then, so this may look like um, understanding 
your own personality traits, personal values, strengths, and weaknesses, and how they impact your leadership. Um, it could be understanding how to self-moderate thoughts, feelings, and beliefs in a way that positively influences leadership. It also um, could be the ability to take feedback and change behavior. Um, so that's um, some parts of consciousness of self. Um, so in like a real life example, this may look like uh, checking in on yourself to see how you're feeling before having a difficult conversation um, where your emotions could sway you. So being able to realize, oh, I'm in a very like negative headspace right now and I need to like take myself away from that to be able to have this conversation with this person to not let my emotions affect my, how I come across. And then, then congruence. Uh, congruence is one has identified an act uh, consciously with, or consistently, not consciously, sorry, consistently with a set of values, beliefs, attitudes, and emotions. So this may look like understanding how actions are reflections of our values and priorities, um, supporting your verbal statements with concrete, congruent actions, um, just demonstrating the ability to admit mistakes and the ability to keep promises. And then a real life example of this uh, might be so say you, uh, you say you value respect, but if you play on your phone the entire time while other people are talking, while you're in a class or a meeting, are you really being congruent with that value of respect? And then the last one is commitment. So it's an intrinsic uh, uh, passion, energy, and purposeful, purposeful investment towards action. So this may look like understanding how personal values contribute to the group's ability for collective action, um, understanding how intensity and duration impact leadership involvement, and understanding of where you put your energy is a reflection of your leadership. So, um, <clears throat> sorry, this may look like um, prioritizing a student organization meeting over watching Netflix. You know, you committed yourself to being a part of that student org, so you put that energy into going to that student org meeting instead of watching Netflix. So, um, a group is clearly defined as a, a set of people working towards a common purpose, but a community is never specifically defined. These groups are communities in which individuals engage in daily life, the community of one's family, residence hall suite, seminar class, work, staff, etc. So that takes us into our next group of values, which Josh is going to talk about. Yep. So now we're going to start talking about a different component of the social change model, which is group values. Um, so the first group value um, in the social change model is collaboration. Um, so collaboration is defined as maximizing a group's effort towards a common purpose, towards a common goal, sorry, by engaging across difference and sharing authority, responsibility, and accountability. Um, so when thinking about collaboration, this is like a word that we hear in our daily lives almost, whether it's your student organization or whether it's you know a class that you have, um, you, we're always hearing about collaboration. And so it's understanding how to create positive working relationships with others that are part of your team or your committee or your organization. Um, and it's also understanding how to hold others accountable um, so that um, when you are collaborate, collaborating, um, you know, not only are you holding yourself accountable, but you're also holding others um, accountable. And also the ability to, as a group, um, establish a shared vision and common goals. Um, so think of this almost like a group project. You have that common goal um, where you're working towards, you know, a grade um, on the project, um, but you also have to, you know, have those positive working relationships of everybody in your group project and not, you have to hold up your end um, of the project and keep yourself accountable, but you also have to keep everybody else accountable with their group. And like we talked about um, that shared authority, responsibility and accountability, um, all with the common goal, you can think about it as like a group project um, that you might do in a class. Um, and so the next group value that we're gonna talk about is common purpose. So common purpose is where you bring all the members of the team together to work towards mutually beneficial goals, common values, and a shared vision. Um, so these group values we're talking about, you know, when you're in a team, 
it's always important to remember your common purpose and why you're there. Um, and I almost argue that this is one of the most important components of the social change model um, because common pur purpose is really um, why you're doing what you're doing. And so understanding of how to create a shared vision based on the group's ideas um, and really um, also understanding how to create shared values within the group because we all have our own individual values but how do we create shared values within our um, groups to where we're working towards that common purpose and understanding how to how do we manage our personal opinion when we might not we when we might not agree with everybody um, within the group um, so you can Another example of common purpose is you think about, you know, a group service project that you might have done. Um, let's say, for example, you know, volunteering or doing a, um, you know, doing a fundraiser for a really great cause. Um, you can kind of think about that group service project. You had that common purpose um, where you wanted to give back um, and really have that positive difference um, on whether it was an organization. Um, a homeless shelter, um, a humane society, whatever it was, um, you had that common purpose as a group um, to really affect and have that social change happen. Um, so that's common purpose for you right there. And our last group value um, of, as a part of the social change model is controversy with civility. And so this is um, really the part where you have the ability to open up and have critical and civil discussions um, which allow for everybody to kind of share their perspective and to be heard and understood. Um, so when you do have discussions within a group um, or you have disagreements, it's always important that even though you're having those disagreements, that you go about it with civility so you can be open and honest and critical um, with others, but you're doing it in a way to where everybody's perspective is still being respected and um, everybody's perspective is being heard. So it's understanding how to use conflict resolution techniques. It's understanding how do you address the problems instead of avoiding them and how to build a safe environment that allows others to express themselves and for others to feel safe and where they want um, to express themselves and their opinions. Um, and so you can kind of think about this as discussions at you know, a committee meeting or a student organization meeting where sometimes, you know, things will be disagreed upon. And that's okay, that's good um, to get those different perspectives in because that's when some really great ideas come out of it. But you got to remember in a group setting how important it is that everybody's perspective is being heard. Um, you're being inclusive to others as well. Um, that's a really big, inclusivity is a really big um, component of controversy with civility. Um, and so making sure that everybody's perspective is allowed to be heard um, is like the main point of controversy with civility. So those are the three group values um, that's a part of the social change model. And so Claire's gonna finish, um, talk about the last couple components of the social change mo uh, model, um, which uh, are community values. Yeah. So the last part of the social change model, there's kind of three groupings, is uh, community and uh, society values. So the final component of the social change model is community and so societal values. Wow, I cannot talk this morning. This component is compromised entirely of citizenship. So citizenship is um, one becomes actively engaged with their community and consciously works towards positive change through care, service, social responsibility and community engagement. So um, for me, at least, I see citizenship as, you know, going and volunteering at, you know, a uh, local uh, senior citizen home um, for a couple hours a week, um, keeping yourself um, like involved in the community or going and uh, working leaves at people's houses. I used to do that when I was a kid. I would go to different um, neighbors' houses and break their leaves for them if they weren't able to. Um, so things like that. So um, this could look like it's the ability to understand current environmental factors and impact on decision making, the ability to keep oneself informed and aware through education and knowledge, and then the ability to respond to situations thoughtfully versus reacting emotionally. 
So definitely with um, recent events going on, citizenship could easily look like education, educating yourself on policies and candidates before you go vote. Like no matter who you voted for, it's really obviously important to know what you're voting for and what those people um, value. So um, it's important as a citizen to be aware of those things um, before you know, go make big decisions. So in, in order to improve a community, is it important to understand the issues in which we are working to address? Not properly understanding an issue can result in action that which doesn't truly address the problem or actually has a negative impact. So the last thing that Josh is going to talk about is change. Yes. So change is kind of the eighth C um, in the social change model. And what it change serves as the hub and ultimate goal of the social change model. Um, so it's grounded in the idea that everybody can contribute um, in making the world a better place. Um, but you also have to realize that um, change is not easy. Um, when we talk about social change, um, it's really important that like we're thinking about, you know, what's our common purpose in a sense um, and why we want to create social change. Um, to leave a positive difference and a positive impact on the world around us. Um, and while this is the ultimate goal of the social change model, it takes all these different components to create change. And that's why it's not always easy and it's sometimes really difficult. Um, and so trans and when we talk about change, we're talking about transformative change, um, which is the ultimate goal of the social change model. Um, so whether it's changing an organization's fundamental values and assumptions, um, you know, change really exists um, to, and takes place at the um, at the individual level, at the group um, level, and also at the community and societal level. Um, so, and at each level, it really um, creating change becomes more complicated. Um, and so, it's really important that you know when we're talking about change, we're talking about social change really um, highlighting that positive difference and that um, common purpose um, in creating change. And so change is like the eighth C, uh, C to the um, social change model. So is um, there anything else, Claire, that you wanted to share about change? Oh, wow. I thought I muted. Sorry, yes. Um, yeah, so there's, did you talk about the three approaches to change? No, you can go ahead and share. Okay, great. So, um, yeah, change exists and takes place at an individual group and community slash societal level. At each level, creating change becomes more complicated. Um, so the stages of personal change is cycl uh, cyclical. So there's pre-contemplation, pre contemplation, preparation, action, and maintenance. And then as a leader, um, you will interact with students in all different stages of personal development. And so there are three different approaches to change. Um, there's making change, which is controlling the change process through force and positional power. And so this may look like, um, you know, a CEO of a company or, um, sorry, ooh, having issues. Um, and then surviving change, surviving and adapting to change as an uncontrollable force. Uh, this may look like, uh, you know, if you see, if you're a part of an organization and you know you see something is wrong, um, you know stepping up and be like, hey, like I think we need to change. And then organic change is recognizing that individuals and organizations are part of an interconnected system which must be influenced and not controlled. So that is the social change model. And so I'm gonna um, stop sharing my screen actually for a couple seconds to let people drop some questions in the chat and I'm going to actually possibly try to find a video about the uh, BGSU Leadership Achievement Award. Um, so Josh, if you want to watch the chat to so just make sure there's no questions. Um, so if you want to share any questions or any thoughts that you might have about the, so the social change model, I know that was like a lot of content right there um, and you don't always retain um, everything that we say because it is so hard, especially I think all of us realize over Zoom, it's um, sometimes really hard to um, retain all the information. Um, so if you have any questions or you want any clarification on anything, uh, me and Claire would be more than happy to talk about that. Um, uh, 
um, about the social change model. So you can go ahead and put those in the Q&A or put those in the chat. And I found the video after we wait a few more seconds to see if there's any questions. It's me talking, but not me stumbling over the words. <laughs> I don't think we have any questions. So if you want to go ahead and share it, then. Yes, I can. All right. Awesome. Well, I'm going to go back to the um, PowerPoint real fast. How do I get out of here? There we go. Oh no. Okay, that's not what I wanted to do. Sorry about that. All right. Go back. So um, what I'm going to be talking about now as um, the second half of our um, presentation is the BGSU Leadership Achievement Award. So as a part of the Marvin Center, um, this is um, an award you can get. It's different than our certificates. Um, and I'm about to show you a video that I made. Um, and um, basically, this video is just going to explain everything. Um, this is uh, the video you would get after you fill out the interest form. Um, so if you are interested in um, signing up for this, you can drop your emails in the chat and I can get you started on that. Um, obviously, you don't have to make any decisions right now, but I will show you this video now. And hopefully, wait, I need to make sure you can hear my audio because that would be awkward. Share your computer sound. Great. Okay. Josh, let me know if you can't hear it. There. Hello. My name is Claire. It's actually I'm on the PowerPoint still. It's oh, I'm still in the PowerPoint? Yeah. Oh, that's weird. Okay, hold on. Let me stop sharing. Stop share. Okay. Sorry. Thank you for telling me. All right. Can you see it now? Yeah, I can see it now. My 60 tab open. Okay, great. For student leadership. We'll start One of the experiences the Marvin Center offers. Can you hear it? This is the BGSU Leadership Achievement Award. Also yeah. known as. Yeah. Okay, great. My name is Claire and I'm a student leadership assistant for the Marvin Center for Student Leadership. One of the experiences the Marvin Center offers is the BGSU Leadership Achievement Award, also known as the LAA. The LAA is a self-paced comprehensive leadership development program designed to encourage and recognize student leadership education and experiences at Bowling Green State University. No matter when you start your LAA experience, all we ask is that you complete it before you graduate. We will talk about specific deadlines later in this video. The LAA is made with four pillars and a capstone project. You received this video because you showed interest in the LAA. In addition to receiving this video, you should have also been given your worksheet as an attachment to the email. The worksheet is a layout of everything that is required of you to complete the BGSU Leadership Achievement Award. You can pull out that worksheet now and follow along if you would like. The general worksheet is white. But if you selected that you are in any of the organizations listed on the interest form, you may notice many of the boxes are green or orange. The green boxes are experiences you may have based off the plans of your organization. The orange boxes are experiences the Marvin Center knows you will have, so there is no need to write a reflection for the orange boxes. Again, green boxes mean you still must write a reflection for the topic. Orange boxes mean no reflection is necessary. If you have any questions about this, please reach out to the leadership at BGSU email and we would be happy to talk to you. Moving on to the pillars. Pillar one is the leadership education experiences you will have. There are six required topics and eight elective topics. The six required topics cannot be changed and you must write a reflection for these. They are design thinking, mission statement slash leadership philosophy, 
group development, inclusive leadership, moral and ethical decision making, and leadership theory. As for the elective topics, you can choose between any of the topics in the worksheet to reflect on. For these topics, you will write a short 10 to 15 sentence reflection about that topic for a total of 14 reflections. You can get these educational experiences from many places. You can have these experiences through the Marvin Center, or you can get them from speakers, classes, or student organization meetings on any of these topics. Any experience where you learn something new pertaining one of the topics listed can be used. So get creative and start participating in events on or around campus. If you participated in something prior to signing up for the LAA, feel free to reflect on that event as long as it is while enrolled at BGSU. If you have trouble with Pillar 1 or any questions about your reflections, please reach out to the Marvin Center. Pillar 2 is about choosing a mentor and having leadership mentor meetings. As a part of the LAA, you will pick a leadership mentor who will be able to help guide your growth as a leader. You're required to have three meetings with your mentor a year, but you can meet as much as you'd like. One reflection is to be written as an overview of all three meetings. The purpose of these meetings is to set goals for what you want to accomplish and to keep you accountable for your growth. Your mentor can be someone in your life, someone on campus, or really anyone you deem fit for the role. If you're having trouble finding a mentor or need any assistance with Pillar 2, please let us know. Pillar 3 is service hours. As a part of the LAA, you're required to do 80 service hours. Now I know 80 hours sound daunting, but it does not have to be service that is done after you start the LAA. All we ask is that the service is done while enrolled at BGSU. However, only one service event can count for a total of 20 hours. For example, I went to Peru in December and did over 40 hours of service work, but I can only count 20 of those hours. So we ask you to participate in at least four different service activities. However, you can complete these with however many experiences as you please. If you want to walk dogs every week for an hour and do that for 80 weeks, you can. If you have any questions about Pillar 3, please reach out to our office. Pillar 4 is leadership prototyping. Essentially, this pillar is experience and action. Participants must demonstrate involvement in two ways, in-class experiences and taking on a leadership role in some manner. Only one summarizing reflection is necessary, but participants can choose to submit separate reflections for each category if desired. Academic team slash group experiences could include something like class group projects, and leadership and action experiences would be any leadership experience outside of the classroom, like organizational or work leadership. This pillar should demonstrate your leadership skills that you learned through the first three pillars and put those skills into action. If you have any questions, about this pillar and how you can accomplish it, please let us know. The last thing needed to complete the LAA is the capstone experience. Participants must complete a capstone experience that demonstrates an understanding, synthesis, and application of previous leadership reflections and activities completed for the LAA. There is no requirement for number of hours needed to complete the capstone. Before you begin your capstone experience, please meet with one of our LAA advisors. You can schedule a meeting with an LAA advisor by emailing leadership at bgsu.edu and requesting a 30 minute session to talk through your ideas and experiences. This will likely be the last part of the LAA that you will complete. Thank you so much for watching and being interested in this opportunity. If you're still interested in completing the LAA, please respond to the email that this video was attached to stating your interest and you will be added to the Canvas shell. The Canvas shell is where you will turn in all of your reflections and design so you know exactly where to submit each reflection. Reflections will be due in March of the year you plan on completing the award. We will be sending out reminder emails when it's around that time. Once you are added to the Canvas shell, please make your way to the Files section to find the video on how to navigate the Canvas page. If you have any additional questions about the LAA, you can email at leadership at bgsu.edu. We are so excited to help you grow as leaders here at BGSU. Awesome. Well, uh, yeah, that was more of me. Uh, yes, um, so obviously this was not um, attached as an email uh, because this is part of the session. 
But um, if you, any of you are interested in completing this, you can drop your emails in the chat. Um, if you have any questions, feel free. Um, we can answer them now. Um, I know that was a bit long and could also be a little overwhelming. So if you um, have any questions or need anything answered, you can um, drop some questions in the chat. Claire, I actually have a question. Um, so I'm a second year student at BGSU and like I'm really interested in this, but maybe like I don't know if I can get all my reflections in by March and I don't know if I have enough experiences yet to, uh, to get the BGSU Leadership Achievement Award. Do I have to complete it this year? Awesome question, Josh. You do not have to um, actually complete it this year. Like I actually signed up for the LAA last December um, but I didn't finish it by March um, just because, you know, COVID and everything happened. And I was like, nope, not happening. So you can take as long or as short as you want to complete the um, LAA. Um, so, uh, yeah, so um, obviously I have to finish it before I graduate in April. So I will have to finish it this year. Um, but if you sign up this year and you decide like midway through February, hey, I'm not going to be able to finish it, that is totally okay. As long as you um, complete it before you graduate, that is totally fine. Any questions? I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint real fast. Does anybody have any questions about the BGSU Leadership Achievement Award or the social change model, um, as we talked about earlier? If you are interested, you can um, in completing the BGSU uh, Leadership Achievement Award, you can put your email in the chat and I will add you to the Canvas page. Um, or if you have any more questions, um, like you're thinking about it right now, but you don't think you know you want to start it right now, that's totally okay. You can add, you can join it at any time. Um, you can just go to the um, BGSU Leadership page on BGSU's website on the Marvin Center. And there's a little square that says Leadership Achievement Award. You just click on that and it, then there's a um, little point to um, click for um, applying for it because you do have to have um, a certain GPA. I'm pretty sure it's uh, over 2.5, um, but that's it. There's a, um, and there's more requirements on the page if you have any more concerns about that. So Connor just asked, how do you determine what are important community values? I feel like with areas being so diverse and so many different issues in them, how do you determine which one is the most important to tackle? So that's a really great question. Um, so referring back to the social change model and the, um, the group values, and um, if we look back, the group values include controversy with civility, um, common purpose, and um, Shoot, I'm trying to find it right now. Um, but talking about the and collaboration. Um, <laughs> um, how do you determine which are the most important? Um, I think it's very important that um, you can try your best in all three of these different um, areas of group values. Um, but you also have to remember that the social change model, like we said, change is hard. And to influence social change, it takes all of these different components. Um, I don't think that one is more important than the other. 
um, because it takes areas from each of these different values in order for you to leave um, an, a positive impact on the community around you. Um, so it takes all of these different components um, in order to um, influence social change. So I wouldn't say that one or one is more important than the other, um, but yes, that's my take on it. Claire, do you have anything you want to share about that? I do not. I think you answered it perfectly, Josh. Thank you. Do we have anything else? I can't pull up the chat, so I don't know why I won't let me. Doesn't look like we have any more questions. Um, but if nobody else has any questions, we're going to kind of wrap up the session. Um, we thank you so much for attending um, the Marvin Center for Student Leadership. Um, we have our ethical leadership certificate coming up. Um, which is a really cool program that you can get yourself um, involved with and um, learn how to become an ethical leader. Um, we also, um, uh, like Claire was talking about, have our BGSU Leadership Achievement Award, which is a really cool um, you know, program that Claire was talking about where you kind of get to reflect on your leadership experiences throughout BGSU. Um, we also, as a plug for our student leadership assistant um, role, we do facilitations um, for student organizations. Um, so if you liked what you heard today about the social change model, or maybe you think that your student organization um, needs some development in um, another area, where, whether it's inclusivity or working together as a group, um, our student leadership assistant team can prepare facilitation personalized um, to your student organization and give a facilitation anywhere from 20 minutes all the way up to two, three hours, um, if that's what your student organization is looking for. So you can request an SLA on our website at bgsu.edu forward slash leadership. And if you are, like I talked about earlier, our applications for um, the student leadership assistant role for next year are open now. So if you're passionate about social change, if you're passionate about leadership, um, and you want to get more involved and be an advocate for those, um, this position would be great for you. The minimum qualifications um, include um, you, next year you have to be a sophomore, junior, or senior. Um, you have to have a minimum 3.0 GPA, um, and you have to be enrolled as a full-time student at BGSU. Um, so if you're interested in that, um, you can go to our application is bgsu.edu forward slash SLA. Um, and if there's no other questions, then we thank you so much for attending. We hope you got um, learned a lot from this session. We hope you have a great rest of the conference today. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day.